Passage through the birth canal often makes a newborn's head appear pointy or elongated for a short time. It's normal for a baby's skull, which is made up of several separate bones, that's Jack in the distance, you can hear that, that will eventually fuse together to be slightly misshapen during the few days or weeks after birth. But if you've noticed that your baby is developing a persistent flat spot, either in the back or on one side of the head, it could be a sign of positional plagiocephaly, also known as flattened head syndrome. 16-month-old Jack has this condition. His mum is Debbie Davidson, and we're also joined by Claire Kerr from Plagio UK. Welcome, all three of you. Welcome, Jack. Hello. <laughs> um, he's making his own contributions quite Very confidently. So, yeah. <laughs> Claire, um, what is plagiocephaly, first of all? It's a flattening on the back of a baby's head, um, usually to the back or to one side of the baby's head, which can sometimes affect the front of the face as well. Right. Um, it's basically caused either a small number is caused in the womb before birth, mm -hmm. but the largest number are caused by positioning after birth, hence the name positional plagiocephaly. Right. Um, and it's from spending usually too long in car seats, baby bouncers mm -hmm. on their back asleep just in one position, and it, the soft skull bones just gradually flatten. And it can stay that way. It yeah. can. The, the, the evidence is that if it's not corrected after about 18 months to two years when the, the skull sutures start to fuse that it will be that way for the rest of their life. And what about little Jack here? What was, what, what was the problem? Well, Jack's head was fine when he was born. There was no problems when he was born. When he was about four months old, I noticed it was flattening out. Or he's going to take off. Was he going to go? <laughs> um, was I, it at the back? Or? It was at the back. It was, yeah. it was right, right across. Um, and I spoke to my health visitor about it and she said to sort of, she said, well, just turn him over in, in the cot to the other side. But she didn't sort of place a lot of emphasis on that or you mm. really must do yeah. it. And um, I sort of did it a little bit half-heartedly and it just got worse and worse and worse. And I did a little bit of research on the internet and all this information came flooding back at me. And then I saw Claire's article in the paper, the local paper, with her little boy, and I met up with her and then I decided to go ahead with the star band. Um, and this is what Jack's wearing, Jack's wearing now, now. Yeah, a, yeah. a star band, a very nice <laughs> little tractor. Stefan, he seems very happy. <laughs> He's it? very happy. Um, how, how long does he have to wear it for? Um, it's 23 hours a day. Right. They have it off for an hour at night, usually sort of bath time. Mm -hmm. um, obviously that's not religious in the beginning, it's um, a little bit at a time. <laughs> Is it mm. difficult to... <laughs> That's the water. Is it difficult to um, get him to wear it? Or no, it? it was... I mean, in Jack's case, it was very easy. He took to it like a duck to water. He slept the first night, but he had to go through the night in it. He's <laughs> very happy 16 months. <laughs> um, no problems at all with it, no, no. no. Okay. A few adjustments, because when they first wear it, they get pressure points, and mm -hmm. they have to be sort of adjusted. But other than that, no problems. What, what is... Um, <clears throat> Oh, shall I move that? Oh, it's so fun, isn't it, Jack? Look at that. Look at all those shapes you can make. That's water, sorry. <laughs> That's <all> right. <laughs> um, what's Plagio UK, Claire? We're an online support group, a, right. a group currently of about 260 members. Um, we, I started it at the end of 2004 because my son went through the same treatment. Wow. Um, <laughs> Everyone is getting soaked. <laughs> <laughs> Your son had yes, plagiocephaly. Yes, my son, and there wasn't very much information at all in the UK. Um, there were all American-based websites, and it's it was fair enough. You were I was getting a lot of information, but I decided to set up a website in the UK as well um, to be more pertinent to the UK because at the time there were only a few people doing the, the helmets. Yep. Um, and gradually we've grown and grown and grown into a, quite a large support group with a chat board and it's just nice is it that... Is quite common? It, it's, it is. At, at first we thought it wasn't that common, but Great Ormond Street Hospital say that there are reports that it could affect one in two babies under a year. Right. So if you think that half of all babies could be affected to some degree... Thank you, Jack. It's presumably not a new phenomenon, is it? I mean... It is relatively new in that it's become more prevalent since the Foundation for the Study of Infant Deaths have advised people to put their babies on their oh, backs to sleep, okay. which is fine and we have no problem with that no. at all. That is right and that undoubtedly saves lives. But what health visitors and GPs aren't telling parents is that you should 
reposition the head every night to face the other way. Right. Um, and in the States, they've just um, changed their advice as well to say that they, they recommend changing the head, which they never did. They did go one stage further than us in the UK and recommend tummy time and lots of play during the day when they're mm -hmm. supervised on their tummies because it's this continual pressure on the back of the heads. Um, and they've gone one stage further and said reposition at night as well with the head, right. which um, we're not doing in the UK and which I, I, we want, we're, as a support group, are trying to get health visitors to recommend. Apart from looking slightly odd, I suppose, is there, I mean, are there any medical problems associated with having... The jury's out. There are some um, research papers which suggest that it can cause um, jaw problems, migraines, um, eye and ear problems, but it, it's small research, nobody right. knows for sure. Yeah. It is largely cosmetic, but then yeah. it's a big cosmetic thing. To have a wonky head for the rest of your life is not well, nice. Well, no, that's true, actually. Yes, I, I hadn't... Um... I hadn't considered that. And how long will Jack have to have to wear that band? Um, hopefully, he's got. He's been in it 21 weeks, and hopefully another five weeks oh, because he's all? coming to sort of his growth time in it. Right. Um, they sort of shave bits out as the head grows outwards. Right. And, and obviously, there's a limit to be reached, and he's reaching yeah. that limit now. So, so his his head underneath that is. It's, it's very much. good, yes, very good indeed. It's grown over 10% in the time that he's worn it, so, yeah, we're very hey, pleased. Jack! <laughs> he's having a, having a little swim there. Yeah, yeah we're very pleased with it. Um, I, I have struggled with it, I, I won't deny, you know. It's been hard to see my baby in, in a helmet. Yes, And no, you but... encounter lots of stares and looks and comments. What do people um, say? Most people don't say anything. It's their faces that say, oh, which is very hard. As soon as someone come up and ask me outright. Mm -hmm. um, but you have to sort of go with the flow, really. Yeah, no, mm. but exactly. Yeah. It's very, it is very fetching. And he seems... Oh, they do really cute designs, yeah, which makes them look nice. Yeah. And they've got lovely ones for girls with, you know, flowers and butterflies and pinks and purples. At the end of the day, this is the only chance I'm going to have to rectify it. I, yes. You know, as he gets older, I'm not going to be able to say... You know, we can do it now, and I don't want to say, oh, I wish I had. No, exactly, yes, and he's not going to thank you for not doing it, is he? No. And because he was a boy, that was another big factor as well, because boys tend to wear their hair short, obviously, and girls don't, so they, they, they say to you, oh, the hair will cover it, um, but that's not really the answer. No, exactly. And did he spend a lot of time lying on his back? Yeah, he was a very heavy baby. Right. Um, prostrate like that all the time. Yeah. It wasn't that I, you know, I never moved Left him around him. or anything. That <laughs> no. sounds awful. I'm sure you didn't. Um, but no, no, he did lay on his back. Naturally, he seemed to like that position. And it just got worse and worse. Is a baby ever too old or too young for one of the headbands? Um, the, there are three providers in the UK and they each treat up to different ages because they, they each disagree. Um, but the maximum that they will treat is two years. Right, okay. So that maximum after that, age limit? After, yes, after that you can have surgery, but that's rather drastic. Gosh, that would, what, what would that involve? I don't know. I think they just un, unfuse the sutures and, and allow them to regrow. But wow. it, that is very drastic, yeah, no, that would, I would say. That would be drastic. Um, what about if, if a baby starts getting red patches and spots under its band? I mean... It, Presumably, it's, it gets quite hot under there. It does, and they're, they're designed to fit very snugly because yeah. they're basically, what they do is they hold the bits that are big enough already with a gap for the bit to grow that needs to grow. Right. So where they're tight and you're wearing them for 23 hours a day, some babies do get little red spots, little mm -hmm. red patches, but they can be managed. The, the orthotists who, who manage these things will see a patient very quickly and can carve a little bit out, which is a pressure spot, or you can, you can use things like Vaseline to stop mm. it happening. Can I, what's, what's it actually made out of? I don't know, actually. It's some sort of... Fiberglass? It's, it's, it's not fiberglass, it? it's some sort it's like of form. Polyurethane. Yeah. And it's moderately heavy, isn't it? I mean, it's not sort of... They don't notice them at all, which is, a, it's, I don't know how much it weighs, well, actually. Jack certainly this one. doesn't seem to, does But they, they really don't know, and especially the younger they are, and they, they can wear these from about four or five months. Right. And that's actually the best time, sort of five to six to months is probably the best mm. time, because that's when they grow the most. Mm -hmm. The largest part of head growth in a baby is before they're a year old. Oh, and it happens even better, sort of at six months. You get big growth spurts, six, eight months, whatever. Um, but they don't notice them, especially the young babies. And Debbie, what's the process if you think your child has um, plagio 
Well, it's Kessel very difficult because you're not getting any feedback from health visitors or GPs. I mean, I went to see a, pe a local paediatrician at my local hospital and it was very negative, very, very negative. Well, he didn't uh, recognise uh, those. It was a lady paediatrician, but it, she didn't recommend, she wouldn't, you know, advocate at all. Um, she couldn't even foresee putting a child of her own through it, that's what she said to me. But she wouldn't deter me from doing it, so it was a bit of